Season's greetings, Knights of the Roll Table. This is part one of our two-part holiday special featuring all new characters. We'll get back to season two on Tuesday, December 31st. Happy holidays and ho, ho, ho. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Knights of the Roll Table Holiday Special, a one-shot campaign. Jingle bells! Yay! I'm Jeff, I'll be your Dungeon Master for this one-shot holiday special, and uh, we'll go around the table and uh, just first say hi to everyone. My name is Chris. Um, Welcome. Happy holidays. And I'm Zach. I'm excited to be here. Happy days, everybody. I'm Matt. Hi. <laughs> I'm Weston. I hope your holiday sucks. No. Ooh. No, should, it's going to be great. We should say that Jen was supposed to be here um, and <gasps> fell ill to the, the winter bugs. We miss you, Jen. Rest in peace, <laughs> Jen. <laughs> Tonight we will be playing a module of my own invention named <sighs> The Legend of Sinterklaas. <laughs> <laughs> For this, uh, we I want to give a shout out to one piece of supplemental information that I did pay for. Uh, I did do the one dollar donation. It is the Deck the Dungeons Heroics to Herald the Holidays, and it is. Let's see here. It is by Luis Tejada and Gyro. So thank you. We use some characters from there um, to amp up our characters for this special holiday edition. And uh, now let's go around and let's meet the characters that everybody will be playing, starting with Mr. Chris. Oh, yes, my name is uh, Sergeant Bumble Roos. Uh, I am a loxodon, uh, an uh, inquisitor. Some people might call it a rogue, but I like to think of myself as a clever individual person. Hello, my name is Borealis. I am a forest gnome, <laughs> and I am a wizard. That wears armor. <laughs> I am not from these parts. People keep asking me if I've been making toys or keeping busy, and it's making me pretty grumpy. Uh, I am Mutton Ale Stew. I'm a Furbolg. I am a druid of the Circle of the Solstice, the Hibernal Sect, not the Estival Sect. Do not get that wrong. And... I am just happy to be where everyone enjoys the cold as much as I do. Hello, I am Designation 002, but you can call me Des. Great, wonderful. So we have a big elephant. We've got... A a white elephant. A white elephant. (laughs) (laughs) We have a little wizard. We have a giant druid. And we have a toy soldier. Uh joining us for this. Now, normally, um, I would say that you guys have been uh, together and traveling and doing a whole bunch of stuff, but that can kind of be hard to naturally and organically get a a sense of what the group is like. So what I thought I would do this time is um, to see how you have fared so far in the many months that you've been adventuring together. I've assembled a little reputation quiz uh, that you guys will take. For each uh, scenario, you guys will pick, you have to unanimously pick what your group did as the action, and then we'll count up the total amount of reputation that you got, and that will give us an idea of uh, how you are being treated here in the Sinterlands. Our first in uh, the 10 pieces of um, reputation quiz here. You pass through a small farming community called Odessa Claus. A herd of mountain goats has escaped their pen. Do you, A, try your best to herd them back where they belong, B, capture a goat or two to keep or trade, or C, cast fireball? (laughs) Well, the goats, they are friendly, so we should be friendly to them because goats, they're of nature, so I think we should should guide them back safely. We do have an obligation to help the Centerlands Fine, help the goats. Let's go. 
A, try your best to herd them back where they belong. Yes. Correct. A. Very good. The farmer sees you, uh, sees your help and gives you a big hunk of mountain goat cheese, plus one to rep. Oh. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Add one. one, two, reputation added. Ding, 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 ding. Question ding, ding. two. In the port town of Winterhagen, you hear rumors of a siren merfolk who has been coming to the harbor and wrecking ships coming in through the fog. You find the mermaid on a rock at night. She tells you she has fallen in love with a sailor and just wants to let him know that she is safe. Do you... A, kill her and collect the 500 gold the ship merchants promised. Yes, done. B, find her lover and reconnect them and still collect the 500. C, find the boyfriend and turn him into a fish man by bringing him to a local witch. I say we do the last one, right? We turn the, the lover into a fish man. That, I, I that agree. Gets them both out of the way and less said the better. Yes, this is a good idea. Bob's your uncle. Does the lover want to be a fish man? Yes. Okay. Food. Very we well. It. C, find the boyfriend and turn him into a fish man by bringing him to a local witch. If you insist. Very good. Oops, the witch turned the wrong half into a fish. But the ship captain Happens. has a cool new attraction for his traveling show. Plus one to rep. Yay! Hey. <laughs> Question three. You come to a no man's zone between two warring cities. Hostilities are high and the temporary peace deal is fragile. Do you A, attempt to negotiate peace, find common ground, and work towards solutions? B, size up the differing sides, build an inner coalition, and attempt to overthrow the weaker side's government from the inside. Or C, find a third city to levy sanctions against both to try and encourage them to stop. Too many variables cannot compute properly. <laughs> this sounds very complicated and time-consuming. I think the third city thing would be uh, take too long, so I, I, I suggest we uh, plant seeds on the inside. The second one sounds most practical and most beneficial. Uh, win-win for us. What was the first option again? Quite right. Still calculating. The peace one. Very uh, well. We would help out both of them, yeah. right? Sir, sure. large fur bog man. Don't so care. A or B? B. B. Size up the differing sides, build an inner coalition, coalition, and attempt to overthrow the weaker side's government from the inside. In. Uh, your meddling works for a short time. However, the long-term effects of installing a dictator come back to bite you in the butt. Minus one to wrap. Oh, oh. Mm. losing oh. reputation oh, is what you get for interfering with people. Question four. Coming to the bustling town of Stockingholm, you encounter two ne'er-do-wellers who offer you a big jeweled ring in exchange for taking their scummy dirtbag boss's prize snow globe as a prank. Do you A, take the snow globe in the night in a Mission Impossible-style heist? B, turn the two into the cops and expose the crime network? Or C, seduce the crime boss and use mind trickery to get the snow globe sexy spy style? I vote for A. Oh, I would love a good heist. And figuring out the mystery of how we would not be caught sounds quite intriguing. All right. You get the jeweled ring as promised, but the guards catch you with it on the way out of town. Minus one rep. Oh, I'd like to challenge that. I don't think we'd be caught. <laughs> well, oh. yes. Uh, <laughs> in the tiny village of Humbergen, a small child has fallen in a well. Do you A, engineer a ladder to get them out? B, leave him. C, use magic to help the boy out of the well. C. C, C use C. magic to help the boy out of the well. Oh, it was a demon down there. Your magic pissed him off, and he shot a powerful spell back up at you. One of you now has a big scar on your face, and it's Shield. going to be... We're going to say it's going to be Dez. Roll a D4, has a big man. scar. <laughs> that would have been a better idea. That is how I, I lost control of my voice. There, that's why you sound like a robot now instead of a... Uh, normal or forged. In the financial capital of Peppermark, local economists are concerned about a housing crisis that is disproportionately affecting elves, dwarves, and other non-human races. Do you A, use regulation and legislation to eliminate discrimination in housing financing? B, encourage rezoning and create tax incentives to build more housing? C, increase the minimum wage to 25 gold pieces per hour, create an adventuring guarantee program, and pass healing potions for all legislation. Is this an NPR show? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that B is a terrible option. More houses means more taking up of the land, so we should not do that. Increase minimum wage. <laughs> I didn't understand that. Either. More money for spells. <laughs> Works for me. More money do to that. take for us. Whatever you think, boys. <laughs> C. C. 
All right, this is the right thing to do. No war, but class war. Housing is a right. Once per day, the party can cast dismantle capitalism and redistribute <laughs> gold pieces from one enemy they can see to everyone in the town they are currently in. So you can write that down somewhere. You have the spell dismantle, dismantle capitalism. capitalism. Question seven. In the rural hamlet of Las... <laughs> Hold on. Oslo, ho, ho, ho. Okay. In the... <laughs> In the rural hamlet of Oslo, ho, 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 the local chestnut. <laughs> one more time, one more time. Where was that? Oslo, ho, ho, ho. The local chestnut farmers have been having problems with bugbears. Do you A, find them, kill them, simple as that? B, find the bugbears, talk to them, and find a happy middle ground? Or C, every one of these answers has had a trick or a twist. Meta game this nonsense and realize the only way to win is to not play at all. Seeing as the uh, 1983 movie starring Matthew Broderick War Games has not come out yet, um, I think we're talking to the bugbears. I caught your reference, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good movie. <laughs> B. B, find the bugbears, talk to them, and find a happy middle ground. Yeah. That sounds acceptable. I like the cut of that jib. This works, and the bugbears become good friends with the people. Plus three to wrap. <gasps> Woo! Question eight. In the open fields of Jingle Belsinki, you come across a wizard who is seeking... Somebody writing down the names. He's got, he's got the names written down. We're going to need I, these I, later. Yeah, <laughs> I've got it. I wish In the open fields of this. Jingle Belsinki, you come across a wizard who is seeking a powerful artifact in a nearby cave. Do you A, help him fully and find the artifact? B, ask questions to find out who this guy is and what's up with the artifact? Or C, get him to the artifact but keep it for yourselves? Did he seem cool? I don't want a bad word or I don't want a bad reputation among wizard circles. He seemed pretty cool. Oh, he seemed pretty cool, guys. Fine. All right. A, help him fully and find the artifact. Oh, B. 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 Ask questions and find out who the guy is and what's up with the artifact. There we go. Very good. We literally just asked questions about him. (laughs) Well, not in the... uh, (laughs) I'm going to power you off, (laughs) Ted. Sleep mode. (laughs) All right. B, this guy is straight up bad. The townsfolk are relieved you didn't help him get the evil artifact. Plus two to rep. Hey. Woo-hoo. You've been invited to a coronation of the new queen in Mariondale, mm. and everything is going good until it turns out she has magic powers. Do you, A, encourage her to let go of the good girl she was always meant to be? B, encourage her to conceal, don't feel. Or C, encourage her sister to become queen and step into the unknown. I would encourage her to uh, come up with a more original character design because they all look like dolls. <laughs> Let it go. Don't hold it back anymore. Well, I'm doing a little what bit of rubber robot again? voice now. <laughs> second one. I don't know why <laughs> encourage you're her to conceal. My voice. Don't feel. Oh, not that. Uh, probably the first one then. A, encourage her to let go of the good girl she was always meant to be. It seems like a bad idea to me, but you do what you Precisely. will. Precisely. Yes. I need a unanimous decision. Hey, yes. hey, hey. Well, her liberation is great at first, but eventually the kingdom falls into disarray. Minus one rep. <laughs> All right. Question 10, our last reputation quiz question. In the far town of Missily Hammer, a sudden blizzard traps you inside with a small family. Do you A, break the tension with board games, B, show them how to make your family's secret chili recipe, or C, sit quietly, don't do anything, just wait it out in peace? I <laughs> used to have a family. Oh. Not too early for backstory. Hold it back. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to talk to those people. We can just sit here quietly and wait this out. Oh, have you ever played um, <laughs> Have you ever played uh, The Knight and the Princess? It's quite a good board game. I say board games. A, break the tension with board games. The family is very competitive. In an escalating series of games and bets, the family cleans you out. You all now have no gold. So any gold on your uh, character sheet, you can go ahead and null that out. (laughs) You do not have gold at the moment. Um, What is our final score for our total reputation that you guys won while adventuring in the Centerlands? That was actually... Calculation comes to five... Mm. Plus five? Plus five. Plus five. Very good. So with a score like that, your reputation uh, allows you uh, to stay in hotels and homes for free. You may even get free drinks. People really want to help you out. So you're kind of quasi-heroes. People know you um, based on your reputation. And that will probably come in handy since you don't have any gold anymore. (laughs) 
So this is a part of your adventure. You've been these these adventures and more have been what you've been doing uh, in the Centerlands over the last many months. And actually, uh, before you got cleaned out, uh, and while you guys were trading and moving around, and you actually were able to find that very same snow globe uh, that you uh, were asked to steal from the crime bosses. Um, from the crime boss's office, and uh, you actually bought that back because you knew that it was special in some way. So you bought that off of somebody who didn't know what it was, and it is actually a special item uh, called the Stocking Home Snow Globe. So it has uh, these traits to it. Uh, smashing it on the ground will create a small uh, house that you can go into and relax in the winter time. So it'll be quite handy. Equivalent to Morden Canaan's mansion, is that what it is? What I wrote? Mystical Mansion. Mystical Mansion. Morgan Canyon's Magnificent Mansion. Magnificent. Then that's probably right. You guys are continuing uh, around, and um, over the last few weeks, it's starting to... It's starting to get colder. Snow is starting to actually stick around on the ground now. And um, a lot of the small villages and towns that you're coming through are beginning to prepare for the midwinter celebration, which in this part of the world they call Yule. And usually it's a time of merriment. They bust out the brandy and the ales and the special fruit cakes that they've been saving. And will have these in a big feast that happens over a couple days. Children get presents. There's all sorts of fun jubilation that happens. And so as you've been going through these towns, it's been it's had a very uh, lively feel. Uh, all of you individually, whether or not you are from the Centerlands or wherever you originally hail from, this is a common practice uh, kind of in the whole uh, in the whole world, I assume. Yep. Great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll everywhere that is, we know of. Everywhere that we know of, <laughs> um, Yule is celebrated. You've been making your travels up the uh, northern road, kind of a main road that has just been taking you north. And uh, you actually get to what is essentially the last town. Uh, it's a very small village, about 150 people, and it's called Myra. And um, you start to come in uh, to town. The snow is uh, lightly falling. And um, where... Previously, you had seen that uh, uh, people are out in the streets hanging up uh, ribbons and festive lights. Well, <laughs> festive candles, <laughs> LED lights, <laughs> icing. <laughs> They're just getting ready. Um, here you notice that there's a little uh, has a little bit of a different vibe. You notice that a lot of the um, windows are starting to get uh, shuttered up. Um, you see that some people have big carts that they're um, putting out. They're putting up different um, pieces of wood all around the town. In the middle of the town, um, you see that there is actually some sort of heap. Uh, it looks like maybe there was a fountain or something there. Now there's a bunch of boxes over it, and including uh, some burlap uh, that is kind of covering over um, the main object there. And um, people are kind of putting some things on it. Other people are uh, constructing things, and you just kind of get a sense that um, something's a little different in this town than you had before. Strange. Where are the festivities? It doesn't seem like they're preparing anything quite for, quite away. Quite the opposite. Yes, it looked like from the looks of things with all the boarded windows and piles of uh, barricades, it looks like they're preparing for defensive maneuvers. If I were to make a deduction, I would say that they've been attacked and they are making a bit of a defensive stand. And perhaps they're in need of uh, heroic efforts. Hey, you over there. Yes, me? Yes, you. What is going on here? Where are the lights and the tinsel? <laughs> you mean for you all. <laughs> we don't do much of that anymore. Why ever not? It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful time. Well, you must be new in town. Allow me to introduce myself. Uh, they call me Father Christmas. Oh, hello, Father. Pleasure to meet you. What brings you so far north into Myra? Well, we are out of... Gold. gold. Oh, well, wait a minute. Do I recognize you? Well, we are a bit of a legend, I guess. Uh, the elephant, oh, the the Tin Man, the the <laughs> I, giant, 
a tree hugger. And the forest gnome and down the here. For- oh, you, yes. You're that, you're that traveling group. What's, you, what's your name? Uh, Collectively. The, you know, the snowflakes. The when snowflakes, been, yes, of course. I hate that name. But we didn't uh, actually pick give it that. to ourselves, but we were, we were, it's after, we, we lost, we went away from one job and they thought it was a bit flaky, so. You just now had an opportunity to rebrand and you reinforced the name. We are the snowstorms. Well, snowflakes, I'm sure if you go <laughs> in, work. The, if you go into the inn, I'm sure they'll help you out here. I was uh, just trying to get one last look at this statue. Uh, you see, around here we used to have this festive man who would come in a sleigh and deliver presents to children. And his, this was where he did it, is here in Myra. It was, there, you've maybe heard the legend. There's a statue in the middle of town? Yes, right. <laughs> Why would you ever start a campaign like that? <laughs> <laughs> look, uh, look uh, fiction's hard and everything's derivative, okay? <laughs> Who's uh, sorry, to say? Um, anyway, um... So it was this man that came in a sleigh. Yes. He doesn't come around anymore. Is he dead? Well, he does, but I don't think it's the same person. Des walks over to the statue to uncover who it is. Does he always describe what he does as he goes? <laughs> yes, he does. It's I very would annoying. investigate the statue. Oh, very good. All right, you go up and uh, you... Uh, kind of pull some of the things away, and you, uh, as you pull off the burlap, uh, you see uh, underneath is a, a very large and portly man uh, with big red, well, with big robes on, and a, <laughs> and a long is it a uh, winter's statue? cap. It's it's looks like it may have been painted at one time, but now it's um, all very faded. There's a few mm, um, like me, yeah, like Des. Get you a paint job soon, Des. And uh, on the very uh, bottom, you see on the plaque there, it says, um, to our beloved Sinterklaas. Is this the gentleman that you were describing earlier? That's right. I've lived here so long, I feel like I'm the only one who remembers the way Sinterklaas truly was. Uh, Now we have to prepare for his yearly coming in a different way. What's he like now? Wait, what was he like before? Before he was, was jolly. like the statue. Yes, look at the statue. He was wonderful, cheerful, and bringing presents and uh, good tidings to everyone. All right, all right. What is he like now? Well, it's a terrible thing. He comes in his sleigh, breathing fire. He's a giant, hideous ogre, and he screams and he sends out ice creatures to snatch up children. We have to board up our windows and fight him. We fire arrows at him and try and prevent him from destroying any more of our town. Well, what makes you think the giant fiery ice ogre is the same as the jolly fat guy? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they are not the same person. I will find three facts to back up my reasons in due time. Uh. Well... I, I wish you the best. If anybody can do it, I know it's the snowflakes. Your legend is, has grown, and I, I want to give you this. And he, uh, he gives you this uh, object <laughs> that is made of straw, and uh, it's shaped uh, kind of like a four-legged creature. And he says, take this. This is a, a traditional Yule goat. It's uh, a <laughs> fanciful creature for around the holidays that would bray and sing and cause playful joy to all the children, but... People don't make them anymore. It's not a real goat. It's like a wooden goat? It's kind of made of like uh, reeds and straw that's oh, okay. kind of bundled. Like a woven. Um, yeah. Maybe it, can, maybe it can help you and bring, and bring you luck on your adventure. Father Christmas's Yule Goat, a wondrous item uncommon, handcrafted by Father Christmas. This Yule Goat is made of straw and festooned with decorative red ribbon around his neck. Player can spend one action to untie the ribbon from the Yule Goat's neck. When the ribbon is off, the straw goat comes to life, braying and running all around. It is loud and distracting, requiring a DC 15 deck save to capture. It will bray and play for two minutes or until someone captures it or puts the ribbon back on. Very handy. Yes, I hope it can help you. You know, the only person who has been in this town as long as me is Mayor Sugarplum. Does a Yule Goat look anything like this? Gingerbread! And uh, Borealis's familiar gingerbread comes out forward, and he looks 
super weird mm. because uh, he's supposed to be a weasel, but every time I've cast him uh, here in the Centerlands, he looks like this. And Ooh. what it is, it's, it's, like, it's a goat, but it's weasel-sized, and it's like stretched out like a weasel, and it has <laughs> short legs like a weasel, but they're like goat legs. A geasel. And every time... Every time Borealis has cast it, find familiar, it's been in some sort of weird goat shape, and uh, in his horns, <laughs> there's like uh, there's lights. <laughs> his oh, horns. Uh, Borealis, put away your weasel. No he, one wants to see he that. He keeps coming out like this. Is he? Is this Ooh. a yule goat? No, that's it's no. <laughs> a yule goat is just a regular goat with a ribbon on it. Well, that's I mean, it. It's. This is an abomination. <laughs> Gingerbread. Can you put that you away? Don't Gingerbread, come back here. Come, come Ooh, to Daddy. Boy. Sergeant Roos is going to go over and like draw, uh, kind of like write some notes about the statue and uh, okay, do some little um, investigative um, journaling in his notebook. Uh, with that, you notice that as you're looking at it, he has uh, human features. He doesn't look like ogre like uh, as you've typically thought of an ogre with a big yeah. mouth and typical um, human, a bit of weight, tusks, uh, and yeah, good ro- robun- robust. Build has a bed. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. Who who do you send us to? Mayor Sugar Plum, Mayor. right there in the uh, in the longhouse. Would uh, anyone have the location of said center house? Well, legend has it he takes up residence in the way up further north in the Northcropolis, <laughs> <laughs> a magical fortress and castle. Well, happy Yule to you. A happy Yule to you. I hope you survive the nights. Uh, can you point us uh, near the tavern? The tavern right across there, the Mistletoe Tavern. Very good. I'm in for me, gentlemen. Uh, you said the mayor was in the longhouse. Do you want to talk to him? First, I need a drink. All right. All right, you go get a drink. I can talk to the mayor. Very good. I find that talking to the locals in a drinking establishment is a good way to find out about the, the true meaning of this land. <laughs> Okay, so Mutt and Adez head off to the mayor. So we'll we'll follow them uh, for this first um, part. So uh, you come to the uh, longhouse. It has uh, very big doors um, on it. has a few steps that come up. It, this is very ornately carved deep into um, these giant pieces of wood that make up the uh, uh, main parts. This looks like it's something that has been here for m- hundreds, maybe thousands of Dez years. Dez ignores all of that. You see, um, uh, as you kind of, uh, the doors are wide open. You see people coming out. Um, with crates uh, on it, and it looks like it's more of the supplies um, that they need. And uh, as you're coming in, uh, you see that kind of up on a a little um, platform at the back of the longhouse. You see a a tiefling... a tiefling man who's kind of hunched over and he has kind of wispy hair, uh, but he wears uh, a three piece, uh, like uh, a vest, and he has kind of like like fatness, like in a weird spot, like it's low, it's too low, like where his fat is, you know, kind of know what I mean? Like of he looks course. kind of like a, um, a Tim Burton cartoon character, huh. like <laughs> kind of his legs are too skinny as well. And, um, he's there and he says, yes, here, yeah, take more, get more, make sure your credits up. Who write this down? Yes. Are you getting more supplies? Mayor Sugar Plum, I am Designation 002, and this is Mutton. We are here to solve your center cloud problem. Oh, I see. Adventurers. Oh, well, we have everything under control here. You see, we have plenty of holiday Burton supplies. Can can you tell us why center cloud seems to want to attack your village? Oh, hard to say. He's just always been so evil, and we just have to stop him at all costs, no matter what every year. It's just <laughs> part of the game of living in Myra. You have to prepare and, and board up the windows and buy tinsel arrows and, and be prepared for anything that happens. Father Christmas said that it was not always this way. No, oh, Christmas is insane. He doesn't know anything about running a, a real town. A naysayer, I say. He's going to get himself killed one of these yules. It certainly seems like you are making the best deal out of this problem. It's a deal that I'm reluctant to make. Would Whatever you, keeps my people safe. Would you be disappointed if we def- 
defeated Center Claus and you went out of business. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but I don't think you could even destroy him. How would you destroy a, a giant, 15 uh, foot tall, fire breathing ogre? You just couldn't. <laughs> But you're welcome to try. He's up in the North Cropolis. Follow the North Road, and you'll get to his compound. See yourselves into the uh, Mistletoe Tavern if you need to spend the night. Let's go, Mutton. All right, back in the uh, tavern, uh, you guys walk in, and um, you see that there's not really much going on. There's the uh, barkeep behind the bar. It's pretty small. Looks like it maybe can max seat about, um, you know, 25 people total. Come along, Borealis. Uh, can I buy you uh, an ale or, or perhaps a cider of some kind? Did you forget that neither of us has any money because <laughs> of that terrible board gaming fan? Yes, well, you know, leave that to me. I might be able to uh, find something. Uh, 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 hello, barkeep. Oh, hi. Um, tell me, uh, is there any, any uh, local uh, law enforcement or um, uh, members of the watch? Uh, I mean, you know, I sometimes am in the militia, I guess. Oh, well, very good. I'm I'm actually a, a member of um, the local law enforcement, well, the watch I was, and now I'm a local investigator. How's it going? Oh. Yes, how do you do? In- oh, very good. A pleasure uh, to Sergeant meet you. Sergeant Bumble Roos. <gasps> Bumble Roos? Oh. Yes, uh, yes. And shakes his hand. You, you, big, you, big, large elephant. Uh, are you members of that? Um, the snowflakes, yes, yes. The yes. snowflakes. Don't yeah. tell him that. I climb up on a bar stool so he can see me. We're, oh. Don't stop saying snowflakes. There's the little it's one. It's not a yes, cool yeah. name. Um, Great. Kind of tips the little this, one. This yeah. Little, I'm little, a battle wizard. He pulls out a uh, like a parchment and it has like a little etching on it. And it has it has like the three of you uh, like regular on there. And then like down at the very, just the, the head part of uh, Borealis is like looking into the frame. Like, I'm down here. Yes, that was drawn after our uh, bugbear encounter. That this went quite well. Oh, yes. Legendary. Legendary. I, I keep them all. Uh, let me get you a drink, please. Well, of course. Um, what will uh, you have? I'll take an ale and my Great. friend here will have a... Cider. We only have ale. I'll All have right. ale. Great, two ales. And what was your name, sir? Mr. John. <laughs> Mr. John? Yeah, Mr. John. Uh, pleasure. Oh, great. Say, we just happened to be in town, and we heard mm-hmm. there was a bit of a scuffle, scuffle, kerfuffle, oh. uh, with uh, this um, Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Yeah, it's, it happens every year. I mean, you know. If one were to um, look into it further, do you have any insider tips? Uh, maybe from one law enforcement officer to another? I, I guess you got to be careful. I heard there's like going to be a, a storm coming in. Oh, uh, quite um, right. Yeah, so, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, venture out without any supplies. As you guys are... Um, uh, I would like to tell if he's lying. Okay, roll whatever you'd like. I would <laughs> inside? Uh, inside. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a 13. Oh, wait, hold on. Plus... Um, uh, 20, 23. Oh, I'm sorry, you rolled a 13 <laughs> and then you added plus 10. 10. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> oh, you're an you, inquisitor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, there's no possible way this person is lying. You know that for a fact. <laughs> I look at his pupils and kind of seem like they're not dying. All right, as, as you're uh, looking at him, uh, in the back kind of uh, far end of the, um, uh, bar, uh, you just gently uh, kind of say, making a list, shaking it twice. <laughs> find out who's not here now. Thank you, John. Uh, we're going Santa to. Santa Claus is coming to the. <laughs> John, who is that man uh, singing that awful god awful tune? Oh, that's Nick Kringle. He's, <laughs> he's kind of a. This is what he does. Excellent. Well, you I think we should talk to him. All right. there and you do the we, uh, we walk over to him and sit down at this table. Hey, you guys ready to fight the center class again? <sighs> again? Well, we, this will be the first time that we've uh, encountered such a beast. So, oh, what are you, new to town or something? Quite right. We are new. We're an elite fighting force with a reputation in these lands. Uh, you've probably not heard of us. We're called the Northern the Brigade. Ah. <laughs> the Snowflakes. Look, I was an adventurer, too, and I was really good. I was... You have any special skills, Nick Kringle? How, you, how are you this impressive warrior? I can do the bow. I can do the ranging. I can do the bow ranging. And 
I was the only person who has hit the center claws with an arrow. Oh, very good. I'm the only one. And I led the first I led the first I led the first journey up to the North Crapolis. Yeah, very nice. He might be an ally and all. Everyone else died. <laughs> what? What <Yeah>. was that? <laughs> Can I tell if he's uh, Everyone else died? <laughs> Roll an insight check. Eight. So what? Eighteen. Dang. He's so drunk, you think he's at the point where he's very, very extra truthful. Yes, I can tell that you've had three uh, small sherries, and you're, I can see by the bulge in, in the uh, the pocket in your jacket that you actually have a flask. So, um, Oh, I got some better than a flask. I'm sure you do. Shh, 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 shh. Let me show you. Look at this. And he pulls out a small... Uh, looks like a like a wooden stick, and uh, on the end you see um, that there's like this packed um, mechanism on the front, and there's a sharp end of it, and uh, it says Holiday Burton on it, and it's kind of like snapped, um, snapped off like it was a full size arrow, but it's just the very tip of it and this little part of it. He says, "You know what this is? This is a Holiday Burton Type T45 tinsel arrow. This is." The only thing that mirrors sugar plum sells. But you know where I found this? What's that? This was shot at me three years ago. And it didn't explode. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Someone shot Is inside that, of the town. During the expedition where everybody else died? No. The center class shot it at me. But you said the mayor sells those arrows. He sells these arrows. I pull out my uh, notebook. Um, Roos pulls out his notebook and scribbles something and kind of writes that down. He puts it back in his chest. Oh, you guys got to get me home. I put my arm around his shoulder mm-hmm. and I kind of lean in. And he's a, this is a smaller human man? or He's a human. He's yeah. um, average height. And I, I kind of pat him on the shoulder and was like, my friend, we will let you know if we need your help. And I wish you good tidings. As I'm talking to him, I'm going to try to take the uh, arrow that he put in his jacket pocket. All right. You don't even need to roll. <laughs> he's he's so... <laughs> you got you got okay. it. <laughs> Done. He says, no, no, you have to get me home. My wife will kill me oh, if, well, if I don't um, get home tonight. Can you take me home, please? Well, um, uh, how about, um, ooh, ooh, you can stay for dinner. Oh, dinner is always done. Oh. Des walks through the door. Oh, <laughs> Des! Hello. Des Martin, up. um, this fine gentleman, a former adventurer and a ranger, I might add, has offered, uh, when we walk him home, get him home safe, he's a bit inebriated, uh, has offered us dinner for tonight and possible lodging. I am so happy for you. Come along, then. Uh, uh pick him up. Food. Pick him up, Des. So we walk him home. All right. Uh, he kind of drunk. You guys <laughs> drunk. He uh, points through it. <laughs> Who is drunk? Who Jeff? is it? Uh, everybody. It's a great. It's a great holiday night, everyone. <laughs> Oh, the 20. <laughs> <laughs> Does this meandering kind of look like the family circus? Where it's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> yeah, everybody's doing stuff. Billy and tries to ready. make his way home. Yeah. Eventually, after going to several wrong houses, you eventually uh, get to what you assume is um, Nick's house. And uh, as soon as you come in, um, this woman comes in. Nicholas, what are you doing? I can't believe you went the bar again. Look, I may have uh, stopped in and, and got I, some I, of this I stuff. I pull off my cap and I say, uh, good madam, uh, oh. my name is Sergeant Bubble Roos. Uh, this is my friend Des, uh, Mutton, and uh, uh, Borealis. <laughs> Borealis. And uh, we are members of the Snowflakes. Uh, and uh, your husband was uh, out and about and he got his foot stuck in a rabbit hole and we helped him uh, get out of it. He was not in a bar as you previously accused him of. Uh, there is a bit of rabbit tuft on his foot, as you can see. She uh, takes a hard look at Nick, and he's failing to <laughs> stand up straight and keep a straight face on. And and she says, is this true, Nicholas? And he goes, no, it's not true. <laughs> says, well, I appreciate it, but you can go ahead and throw him on the couch in the den. Uh, that's where he belongs Des. tonight. Have at it. Oh, Come Nick. with me. What is your name, ma'am? Do <laughs> 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 you want to? Oh, yes, yes. Putting this cross stitch on it's the. It's Mary. Uh, it's Mary Kringle. Oh, very nice. 
But everybody just calls me Mrs. Kringle. Hmm. That's all I've ever been is Mrs. Kringle. That M E R R Y? No, the proper way. Okay. M E A R R Y E. That's just how my mother spelled her name. Please. Uh, Lots of shocks. Let me pour you some stew. Please. <laughs> Thank creatures. you for getting my husband home. You know, he was a great warrior. Why once. did you give me a bowl? Oh. I'll eat it. Okay, double. Double for you, little Thank one. You. Oh, you're that's it's just, just, a, it's just so a cute. It's just etiquette, Des. Uh, everyone gets a, uh, something, even if they're not going to eat it. So that what brings you to town? <laughs> well, we are um, in need of coin, and also um, we have heard that there is a problem with a large fire-breathing ogre person that oh, comes yeah. along and kills people. Yeah, the center class. Yeah. What do you know of the center class? Oh, just what everybody says and what Nick says. How long have you lived in this town? Well, let's see. We're going on uh, 20 years here. Congratulations. Oh, thank so you. Have you seen the center class always be like this, or is this a new thing? You know, I didn't, I didn't grow up here, so I, I met Nick when he was out adventuring, and we we just we just fell in love and um, moved up here. He wanted to be close to um, his parents, rest their soul. And um, yeah, so this is the only center class that I've ever known. But Nick tells me that it used to be very nice. He used to get gifts, and it was a very jolly holiday. Would you guys like dessert? Yes, please. Okay, it would be wonderful. Oh, he just always had the most crazy stories to tell. But he just you'd know he was like the spokesperson for Holiday Burton before. Right? For what when now? When yeah, he was the he was such a good adventurer. He was the spokesperson. She sets out uh, this big loaf, and it looks uh, it's just giant. It's like um, <laughs> what like a foot uh, a foot tall and like six inches wide. She spent several uh, as she's been talking to you has been cutting <laughs> this thing, at sawing at it, <laughs> just talking as she goes, and then finally she takes the whole thing and she uh, sets it down on in front of the table, and she says. Um, you're welcome to eat it now. It travels really great. It's a family recipe for my fruitcake. And uh, now it is an item uh, that you guys can Indestructible have. Indestructible fruitcake. Mrs. Kringle's fruitcake. Yeah, I hope that'll help you. You can have some now if you want, or you can take it with you. You boys need a place to stay tonight? Mm. That would be wonderful. Great. We have the kids' rooms. You know, they moved off. I will be outside. All right, boys, you get settled here. Stay here the night. I'm sure Nick will show you to the North Acropolis in the morning. So we stay. All right, great. Uh, if there's nothing else... Does, uh, does Des just stand outside? <laughs> so Des doesn't actually have to go to sleep. So I, I have okay. a, a, a sentry ability. So I am standing outside, mm -hmm. kind of powered down, but I'm still aware of my surroundings. Good night, all. All right. Where you? Oh. So... Des, as you are outside centurying, go ahead and roll a spot check. Also or known um, as in 5e as a perception check. As a perception <laughs> check. Thank you. <laughs> 21. As you're, um, as you're standing out there, um, you begin to uh, kind of hear uh, what kind of sounds like um, ice... Uh, rustling in the trees, like it has like a a wind chimey type of quality, and you hear some skittering and scattering kind of on on the uh, wood there. You get a sense that maybe there's something um, scurrying around. Des will remain powered up, but not moving. He will power up, but not not move. All right. As you continue to um, listen and observe, you actually hear uh, more like sounds of like ice, kind of. Hitting against itself, and you also start to hear some little, <laughs> and then you start hearing um, what sounds like uh, kind of wood, like kind of being pried, uh, pried up. Des is going to try and stealth over to where the sounds are coming from. All right, you come around on the other side uh, of the house where um, some of the bedrooms are, and uh, kind of crawling on the side of it, uh, you see these little tiny creatures. They're looks like they're uh, blue, translucent, kind of made of ice. Um, they are ice methods. They're like little demons made of ice, and they are pulling at it, and they're, uh, you just hear them go, yeah, ooh, find the children. Yeah. They're pulling up the uh, boards of the, boarded up windows of the Kringle house. Des will roll some snowballs in his hands. He has, he can treat any improvised weapon as a proficient weapon due to his feat 
And then, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to roll two snowballs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Squeeze them real hard so they just kind of turn to ice. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I'm going to chuck them at them. All right. The two ice methods. Or uh, at, at, at one of them, I'm going to try and... I'm going to try and elf this nonsense. <laughs> Perfect. Go ahead and uh, roll an attack, and you will get... Um, uh, you can roll with advantage since you have sneak attack. You have to jump on him. 18 to hit. 18 hits. Oh, yes. Nope. Sorry, Coach. Sneaked up. Snuck out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Eat this, demon creatures. <laughs> Seven damage. No, eight damage with the snowball. All right, and with that, we're going to roll initiative. Ooh. Alert, alert, alert. Here's our initiative. Uh, first, we'll have uh, Dez again, uh, then Mutton, then Borealis, then the enemies, and then Sergeant Roos. Dez, your turn again. Get out of there. Dez is going to kind of run forward, uh, and he's going to just do a double punch. So To the same one that you already hit, or to yeah, one I'm gonna, to each? I'm going to punch one of them. Okay. And then I might punch him again. We'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> punch away, Meryl. 11. Miss. And the second punch, 12 to hit. Hits. Six damage. All right, you fly up, and uh, you miss once, but you swing by again, and uh, you give it a good punch, and a bunch of ice crystals fly off it, and it goes, Bleh! Like that. And just as you're um, doing that, from the roof coming down, you see that there's two more ice methods uh, crawling down um, the wall right around you. So there's now four of them uh, uh, crawling around right now looking at you. Leave yes. the premises. I will activate cheer mode <laughs> and use one point of cheer to use flurry of bows. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Flurry of bows. We have cleverly <laughs> rebranded many typical <laughs> yeah, spells yeah, yeah. and abilities. Ugh, natural one and a four. Okay, well, <laughs> both do not hit. That is a shame. Next up we have Mutton. Mutton, uh, upon hearing that there is danger, is going to turn into an ape and run outside. Wonderful. <laughs> That'll end his turn. <laughs> the Christmas ape. Uh, you, uh, you're turning into an ape first? Yeah. All right, great. You turn into an ape, and uh, as you're running through uh, the den to get outside, <laughs> uh, Nick Kringle, like, kind of comes to him and he sees you kind of lock eyes with him. And <laughs> running through. He goes, oh, boy, and he just goes back to sleep. Um, you turn the corner, you see these ice methods on the house. Bonus action to beat your chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the intimidation factor is real. Borealis. All right, so I'm awake. I'm inside. You're right? awake inside. Uh, 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 an ape just ran out. Uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> this situation probably defeats the whole shtick that I'm a level one fighter, so I can wear armor because I probably didn't sleep in that. But I'll grab my shield and run out in whatever I wear <laughs> under my armor <laughs> into the cold, cold night. Yep. And uh, <laughs> what what do I see if I do that? So there's two that are kind of at the first window, and then two that are above on the uh, roof. All right. But looking I, over. I will use my cantrip that I'm calling attack candle, mm -hmm. uh, which is a bolt of fire mm -hmm. that I shoot. Uh, I'll shoot at the top one and hope it falls on the other one. Okay. It is uh, 17. That hits. All right. That should be nine points of fire damage. Eat my candles. <laughs> you come around, you go, yeah, eat my candles. And you point, <laughs> and uh, this fire comes in. And um, as soon as it hits it, it just turns into a poof of steam. <laughs> just, <laughs> it just disappears. <laughs> um, and actually, um, as that happens, uh, because of that explosion, uh, it explodes in a burst of jagged ice uh, that kind of goes everywhere. So uh, everybody within five oh, feet of it, um, which will include the other two, uh, methods nice. and uh, Dez, you have to roll a dexterity saving throw. Twelve. So you take uh, one point of ice damage, Dez. All right, it is the ice methods turn. So they are going to um, split up. The first one is going to attack you with its claws since you're right there. Nine. Misses. All right, it goes and it goes ah, and tries you to can't. slice at you. It does not do that. The second one that's down on the window too is going to come over and try. Um, it is going to do. He takes in a big breath and he goes, <gasps> and out comes a bunch of uh, frozen ice. Oh. It's like it's like when you um, 
like have an Altoid or like a cool <laughs> mint and then take a cold water. <gasps> it's, uh, that happens. So roll a deck saving throw. Eight. Eight. So you are going to take the full damage of 2d4. Oh, that's five, my friends. So you take five cold damage from the ice breath. Chili. Uh, one is going to come over to uh, Borealis and attempt to claw at you with his little icy claws. Uh. Ooh, that's a 20. It's going to give you three slashing damage and, ooh, four uh, frost damage there. Wow. So he uh, got you there pretty good. Uh, the other one is going to... Nah, it's going to do something else. All right, it's going to go to Des and it's going to attack you. Uh, 19. That will hit. All right, so you will take three slashing and uh, three frost damage as well. All right, and now it is Sergeant Roos's turn. Oh, pretty good. Um, so uh, Sergeant Roos is inside, and he's wearing uh, just, like, long johns, um, you mm-hmm. know, with a little flap in the back for his mm-hmm. tail. Yep. And, um, <laughs> and so he's kind of, like, putting on his, his cloak. Puts it on, and that gives him an advantage to um, hiding, and mm-hmm. um, it's a cloak of elven kind. Mm-hmm. So he uh, can he get outside with 30 feet? Yeah, you can You can round the corner, and you can... It's a small enough house you can... Okay, yeah, so he uh, make an action. kind of uh, stumbles outside, and uh, he says, Oh, goodness gracious me! And uh, pulls out a, a little bow. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a big, large <laughs> loxodon. He has a little bow that's about, like, two feet, and, he, and it's a short bow, and he goes, uh, uh, Back, foul beasts! And he pulls back as he goes, <laughs> I rolled, um... It was, it was eight. Oh, yeah, that'll miss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Pew! Goes gracious. wide. Um, and uh, so I'll use a... Um, Cutting action uh, to take the uh, dashing through the snow. Oh, no, I'm actually going to hide. So I'm just going to pull my cloak. Uh, I'm going to pull it over, pull the hood over my head, and I kind of like put myself down to the <laughs> ground, and the cloak makes it look like it's just a big pile of uh, uh, snow on the ground. All right. Um, <laughs> where did he go? <laughs> Somehow this works. Um, this giant elephant is now invisible to most of you. All right, great. Uh, top of the order, Des. Des will take two strikes against the ice method. Mm-hmm. 19 and 22. Oh, both hit. Both hit. 10 and 8 damage. 18 damage. <laughs> Great. So uh, you swing your uh, first mm-hmm. punch, and just like before, boom, it shatters into a big uh, cloud of shards of ice. So go ahead and roll another dex save. That is 17. All right. You take one, one, one damage. One frost damage. The other one takes uh, three. He goes, Wah! I Anything am else? very cheery. Great. Bonus action, cheer point. For flurry of bows. <laughs> flurry away. Four and a one. <laughs> Not very good at that. It is <laughs> very cold are, yeah. out here. Not working for you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the second one still is up in your face. All right, Mutton. So there's two methods, one over by Borealis and one over by Des. Yeah, 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 yeah. two down. So there's the one that breathed... Breathe right. nicely. He's still up okay. uh, on the roof. The other one is in front of. Can I get up uh, on the Borealis? roof? I'm an ape. Uh, yeah, <laughs> easily. <laughs> so I hop up on the roof, and then I'm I'm gonna attack that little dude. Uh, the one on the roof. Yeah, great. So I'm gonna fire away, punch Marilyn. him twice. So the first one is a uh, fifteen to hit. Hits for eight damage, and then I'll punch it again. Okay. That one is. Uh, uh, that's 13 to hit. Hits. And Jeez. eight uh, more damage. Great. The ape swings up, goes up, goes, uh, poof, poof, does that. Oh, oh. Again, explodes into uh, an icy blast. So go ahead oh, and roll no. in a uh, dexterity save. Is he by me? Um, he's up on the roof. He's up on the roof. So okay. I'll, I'll oh, say that the, the angle won't really hit you. What'd you get? That was a 12. One damage for you, my. Uh, oh, Borealis' turn. So there's one left. He's right in front of you. All right. I'm going to reach out and ga- and cast uh, what I'm calling the cat knocked over the Christmas tree because <laughs> it falls over and the water spills and the electric lights get all messed up and you oh, okay. can get electrocuted in that oh, okay. situation. <laughs> Great. Awesome. So wow. that would be also known as shocking grass. That was a journey. <laughs> wow. That's shocking. I rolled an 18. Oh, yeah. That hits. All right. 
So he's going to be electrocuted, unable to take reactions in this turn, and takes five lightning damage. And you have to, like, actually grab, grab it, him. right? All right, you grab, you electrocute. It goes, Wah! you see sparks coming off and more um, uh, snow and frost coming off of it. Um, and then I run away because he can't take a reaction. Okay, great. He doesn't take a reaction at all. He stands there a little bit stunned. And um, now he's going to look uh, around. He sees the uh, ape up on the <laughs> up on the top. He sees the, uh, the tin man. Come and then uh, he doesn't see the giant white woolly mammoth uh, anywhere. <laughs> so he's going to go for... Hidden. <laughs> he is hidden so well. And he's going to go for the gorilla. Oh, that's going to be a miss... Uh, there, so he's going to kind of come up, uh, tries to claw at you with his icy claws, and misses. So it is now Sergeant Roos's turn. Oh, very good. So I'm going to uh, kind of lift up from my crouch position, and I'll say, oh, how about the brigand? And I will shoot again. <laughs> uh, another arrow. Well, that's better. Maybe um, it's 11. Misses. Oh, rats. <laughs> so miss there. Oh, right. Top of the order, Dez. I will run a little closer to him and use my bonus okay. action. Okay. Or I just move my use my movement to run and uh, use my bonus action to hide. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd he go? <laughs> Dez will jump, attempt to climb on the roof. All right, roll a uh, an athletics check. Um, that's a one. Hmm. Plus three, so mm-hmm. four. All right, so um, no, it's <laughs> it's icy and slippery. Uh, your non-organic hands try and grasp at anything, but it just doesn't work. This is not mm. uh, Des. Instead, uh, having not been able to climb up, uh, will switch his hand into a hand axe. What? And attempt to throw the hand axe at the ice method. All right, roll That's away. just Weston. You can say you can use that in Weston voice, right? I don't know how to speak normal <laughs> any a, longer. He's oh, a method no. actor. We broke him. <laughs> Sixteen to hit with that, the axe. That hits. Eleven. Great. You uh, launch it at it. It takes out a bunch of the uh, ice there, and uh, it blah, kind of um, growls a little bit, and uh, but still standing right in front of our ape friend. Your okay. your turn. I will now multi attack. So two hits with the fists. So that's 25 and 20 to hit. Yeah, those will do it. Yeah, I figured. Okay. 16. Mm Mm-hmm. Punchy damage. All right. You uh, grab this. uh, Instead of punching, you actually just grab it, (gasps) and you just go, and rip it apart, (laughs) and it it just explodes into uh, just a bunch of ice. So roll a dexterity save. Uh, 19. 19, so with that, uh, you only take another one damage. Uh, a, a, a light, cool breeze um, hits you, uh, <gasps> monkey man. And with that, all of the ice methods are destroyed. And um, coming out uh, around around the side of the house is uh, Mrs. Kringle, and she's wrapped up in her robe, and she's got a, a, a short sword out and um, a shield in her other hand. Nice. And she comes around, and she says, Okay, where are they, boys? Don't oh. worry. We took care of them, oh. citizen. Oh, okay. We'll be inside. You need to you get your just in your knickers there, Borealis. I'm very chilly. Okay, let's get you all dressed up. <laughs> Mutton. Oh, is that your uh, monkey friend? <laughs> oh, okay. He waves. You're welcome to come in, too. We have bananas. He swings He swings down in <laughs> right, the doorway. Right. He's still, he's still right. in ape mode. He is... <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Kringle gives some scratches on the back. Oh, you're just so soft. You're just a nice, nice little boy, aren't you? All right, you guys go in. You guys head back inside uh, after uh, some settling, uh, hot coffee in you or whatever you need uh, to kind of warm back up. Uh, you settle back down and you get a full rest um, through uh, the whole night there. You're all awakened uh, by the delicious smell of um, cooked uh, bacon uh, as it fills in the aroma of your room. Except for you, Des. Um, <laughs> you're just still awake outside <laughs> doing your construct stuff. And uh, you guys wake up and uh, come out and you see that um, the table in the dining room is just full of um, breads and jams and coffee, eggs and bacon and just every bit of breakfast treat that you could ever uh, kind of want or have. Yeah, you guys come out and Miss Kringle, she's cooking away. And she says, all right, eat up, eat up. If you're going to take Nick, you guys better get ready. You better uh, get a, 
get a whole meal in you. Does Des want something? Des, come on in. Yes, you requested my presence. Do you need some... You want some oil or something? <laughs> that is very offensive. Coming down the stairs, you guys see uh, Nick coming down the stairs. He's going... <laughs> he is chipper. He is up. He is ready to go. Uh, he does not look like he was... Um, he is not in a state that you thought he would be in um, this morning. He's coming down. He's like, hey, chaps, what's up? Let's get ready to go. We're heading to the North Cropolis, right? We're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. Hey, honey, how are you? And he gives a gives a little kiss. Oh, get something to eat here before you go, okay? And then uh, he sits down. They uh, Everybody kind of starts eating. I use my trunk to kind of sniff near him and <laughs> see if he's still drunk. <laughs> you <laughs> you sniff around. You don't smell. Um, you don't smell any um, alcohol on him or There's anything. There's no whiff of the hair of the dog. I believe he's clean. But uh, you smell some uh, different kind of herbs and um, kind of chemically smells. You think maybe he had some sort of magical help to cure well, whatever hangover he might have. Very had. good. Well, uh, yeah, got to be prepared. All right, I'm going to take these guys to the North Cropolis. Right, we'll take care of them. Uh, Mary will take care of him with our life. Thank you very much for the bounteous breakfast. Oh, you guys just get back uh, before the Yule assault happens, okay? Before that Sintra class comes, okay? Well, perhaps it won't happen at all, but we'll see with with your luck and your fruitcake. Thanks for your help. I'm going to take some of this to go. We will seize the day. Oh, you want a little box? Yes, let, me, let me pack it up. She packs up a little bit of the extra bit and gives it all Much appreciated. Borealis. But I would have uh, attempted to rise early and take the time to meditate and cast okay. Find Familiar again. And this okay. time attempt to make him an owl. Make mm -hmm. gingerbread an owl. Okay. What you create um, <laughs> is uh, this creature that has kind of the body of an owl, um, where it would have kind of orange feet. Uh, it has it's little like materialized tiny goat. piece by <laughs> yeah. piece. Uh, these little goat uh, legs kind of come out. Uh -oh. But there's go, just, go there's the just way. two it's of them, so hoodle. it looks kind of okay. Um, the wings kind of come in, and instead okay. of um, feathers on it, though, it kind of has this like long, wispy hair on it. Ew, but it should be able to fly. <laughs> yeah, okay. so well, maybe. And then uh, it gets the the owl head, um, but instead of like the big kind of regular eyes, it has the weird goat eyes that are oval. <laughs> oh, the, the like rectangle at yeah, pupils? Like oh, the weird, it's so weird. Yeah, it's super weird. And then it uh, two big horns off the top of it. That's well, a horned um, owl. Yeah, it's right. a horned owl, so close enough. Yeah. Let's go, gingerbread. Great. He goes, <laughs> 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 can't, can't like kill me. <laughs> <laughs> You walk the path up the northern road to the North Acropolis. Uh, you guys notice um, uh, about an hour after leaving town uh, that kind of all the trees and any shrubs or any sort of greenery kind of starts to um, fade away. You guys are now like in um, proper glacial polar um, conditions here. You guys spend um, a good half day kind of walking. What maybe would have taken um, just a few hours, just because of the uh, snow and the extra wind that you're going against, it's um, it's just taking a little extra longer. Finally, as uh, Nick is kind of uh, huddled uh, up ahead, he kind of turns back to you guys and he, he kind of gives like a slow down. Like, Hold on. We're here. You guys kind of uh, come over a hill. And what you see... Uh, lit up in um, kind of magical fire all around is this giant um, complex, kind of fence-type wrought iron. goes all the way around um, what must be a two- or three-acre complex. And there are three major things um, that you guys see inside. The first is the Sinterklaas Castle uh, that Nick points out. And it is a um, big, multi-story, uh, big castle. looks really grand. It's decorated with uh, all this regal-looking uh, um, accents to it. Next to that, you see that there are um, some lights down on the ground on a clear... Um, on a cleared piece of actual ground that looks uh, very long and flat. Looks like maybe some sort of runway. Next to that, you see that there's a building next to it, uh, right near it, that's very tall and very large. On the opposite side, you see that there's a uh, another very large building. It looks like a factory. It's very large. It has a windows just up at the top, and there's a smokestack chimney there that's putting out, putting out uh, black smoke as it's there. 
and Nick gives you the lay of the land, and he says that's the uh, that's the workshop where the elves used to make the toys um, for for Yule. I think they're still in there, but I don't know if they're if they've gone evil too or, or what to expect in there. He says over there, that's the uh, that's where Santa Claus used to uh, have his sleigh, and where he would ride into town, uh, flying through the air with his reindeer and uh, to deliver all of the toys. And in the castle, that's where he that's where he would live and spend all of his time here in the North Congress preparing for the next Yule feast. I haven't dared venture in since, uh, since we lost my comrades uh, in our last expedition. I know that there's a small hole down in here that we cut last time in the fence. So it's an access point for you, but I dare not go in. We can turn back if you'd like, if you want to just put this all behind you and we can just prepare for the... The typical assault. Why do you not wish to join us? I want to help, but I've been out of practice so long, I don't know if I'd be much help. I can keep guard here and and prevent uh, closing out this gate, so you'll definitely have an escape. I understand there. Hey, you got any of that peppermint sherry? You know, uh, Uh, I don't, but I have something else that might aid you on your journey. Nick Kringle's candy wand. This wand is around three feet long, smooth and cylindrical with a big wide crook. As an action, the holder can point the wand at a target it can see within 90 feet. Say the words, better keep you in mint condition. <laughs> a blast of wintergreen springs forth and any target with 15 hit ports or fewer will be turned into solid piece of peppermint candy. Oh, how about that? Jolly good. A successful melee attack, AC5, will shatter the candy. Otherwise, the creature uncandies after 10 minutes. Oh, very good. Very nice. Well, um, I have no uh, need of uh, wands, but um, maybe you as a wizard of some kind, Borealis, might enjoy this sort of thing. It's quite sweet. I'll take the wand. Okay. Before you leave, he, um, Nick says, I got to warn you. Though. The owl monstrosity sits on the top of the little... Uh, <laughs> oh, <got> the t- <laughs> <laughs> You're using since it, as it doesn't, yeah. Since it doesn't have talons, it kind of has to sit on its... <laughs> it kind of has to straddle it and wrap its legs underneath it. <laughs> So it looks really... <laughs> it's, little, it's little hooves keep yeah. slipping off the top. Yeah. Those goat eyes. <laughs> well, I say if we can get the elves to help us overthrow the compound, then maybe we would have some unlikely allies. It's like the time that we got those two uh, different kingdoms to fight each other and we spoiled the riches. That didn't go as planned. That's true. Well, this one, I'm sure, will go much better with elves. Nick, do you know if there are any animals inside? Uh, the only animals are, um, if they're still around, are uh, Santa Claus's reindeer. We should see them as well. Talk to them. Perhaps they can be of assistance. Oh, yes. Is there stables of some kind? Is that near the factory? You know, I, I, I don't really know. We never got that far when we ventured in. Do you have any sort, some sort of reindeer sense? That's offensive. <laughs> <laughs> You're a druid. Do you can you talk to reindeer or not? I can talk to them, but I do not know where they are magically. Do you know where other short people are? Do <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're down here. Do I see any small animals? No. Okay. Besides your monstrosity sitting on the candy cane, no. Yes. All right, Nick says uh, this is where I leave you. Hopefully, we'll be out soon. Well, boys, what say you? All right, where are you guys headed first? I say we go to the factory. I agree. All right. So you guys uh, are walking across. You're trying to be very um, stealthy as you go. Um, now that you guys have um, kind of arrived here, um, the Aww. harsh winds, <laughs> the harsh winds have, <laughs> keep it quiet, you. Uh, the harsh winds have uh, died down a little bit. You guys make your way and uh, you come up to uh, the factory without, um, without any incident. And uh, you guys kind of aren't able to see very, very much. There's windows, but they're uh, very much like up high, probably uh, 15 or 20 feet uh, above you on the building. Otherwise, um, as you go down the long side there, there is a uh, door at the very end over there. And uh, on the other wall, it's just flat. So I'm going to try to, like, nudge up uh, Gingerbread and see if he can fly up to the window from here. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I'll hold up the hold cane. Hold on, hold on. Get him kind of uh, up I, there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, put my trunk around Borealis's feet and raise him Ooh. up. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, and, and I'm about seven feet, so my trunk is about uh, five or six feet. 
So it's going to raise you up to about 11. All right. And then I'll hold up the cane. Great. Another, another three, three feet. feet. And the <laughs> small plus your stupid height. useless owl is on top of that. Plus your yeah. height. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Plus your height plus that. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> you guys hold it up. And uh, he's sitting. <laughs> what's, his, what's his name? Gingerbread. 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 So gingerbread oh. sitting on the candy cane. Like, wah. All right. You flip into uh, his vision. You change channels to his vision. <laughs> and instantly, like stepping into VR, you somehow see more than 360 <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> or more than 180 degrees. It's very uh, it's very unsettling to you because of the uh, the goat eyes. Um, and all you see in front of you is just one goat brick <laughs> right there. You think that if... He could stand up. He could get up there. Okay. If if the owl could if gingerbread stand up. stands up, he's stand sitting up. on the candy gingerbread. Cane. Stand up. He goes, now, come on, Blah. gingerbread, come on. Blah. What's going on up there? He needs to stand up. My familiar acts independently of me, but it always obeys my commands. Spell text. <laughs> All right, after a sec, <laughs> after a sec, he tries to get his footing on the slick candy cane and uh, finally looks over. You're looking through, and what you see um, is indeed a, a factory floor. You see that there's um, like a little assembly lines, there's mach- uh, machinery, there's simple um, billows and fires um, kind of going off. There's people working, there's um, you know, metal working stations and all this kind of stuff. And you do see, in fact, that there are elves working here, not like little Christmas elves, but proper elves from the kingdoms in here. And um, you also notice that all of them have a shackle on their leg and they're attached to a a big ball, like a a big weighted ball, like a classic ball and chain. Mm. You see that uh, in here that they're um, all working on stuff, but it doesn't look like they're making toys or anything. It looks like they're making um, they're making weapons. Mm-hmm. They're making arrows. They're making um, barricades. They're making shields. All that kind of stuff. And um, what you see is they're um, kind of near where you are. There's a like a platform um, all the way across with different um, kind of bridges that go over. And uh, up on here, uh, kind of walking around, are these little impish creatures that are kind of looking down. And every once in a while, if one of the elves uh, kind of goes, dusts off his brow or something, he goes, and kind of uh, spits fire at him. They go, oh, and gets back to work. And at the very head of it, um, you see uh, this bright red, uh, what can only be described as a devil. And he stands like seven feet tall. And um, he has a pointy tail. And he has a really long beard. Um, that he uh, holds out like this. And any time uh, somebody uh, isn't doing something, he whips that beard and it uh, stings at them and then he goes, he goes, back to work. <laughs> and uh, takes his beard and, and ravels it up and swings it around and slaps at him, keeping all these elves working nonstop to make all this weaponry. You see that indeed there's the door that uh, where you could have came from. There's also a door on the opposite side. And in the back, there's a big, what would be like a big roll-up door. And that's what you see. It's been a good, been a good journey, folks. Let's go back and have a pint. <laughs> <laughs> Does that devil have a beard? We're out. We're done. <laughs> nah. Well. I don't do bearded devils. Perhaps we could release some of the prisoners. I can break them out with my tools. Well, I've got tools as well, Des. Well. Perhaps we could work together. Yes, I'll get the door. You get the uh, chains and such. Maybe we need a distraction of some kind. Mm. Oh, we could use the little goat. Oh, that's a very good idea. Perhaps you and I could go to the opposite door. Oh, very, very good. And good tactics. Their attention would be on the goat. Yes, I like that idea. You should take. Borealis, I will go invisible and release the goat. You go to the other door. It seems like it's fine. Right. You'll be all right. Yes, I'll be fine. Okay, I go back to the other Let's door. go. All right. So when I, I feel enough time has passed that they would have gotten around the building, I will use hidden step to turn invisible, mm-hmm. which only lasts a turn, but that should be enough to open mm-hmm. the door. As we plan, I'm going to cast Disguise Self. Have not come up with a clever name for Disguise Self. And make this myself. Guy's elf. Look, this, oh my gosh! 
Okay. Oh, I have. Well, I was going to ask which creature I was closest in height to, but I feel like I'm going to have to make myself look like one of the elves. <laughs> yeah. Using disguise, elf. <laughs> Perfect. All right, you look yep. like a little elf. Yeah. Okay. So I will hidden step invisible, uh, crack open the door, take off what was it, the ribbon, Is mm-hmm. that how this, and then push the little wicker goat inside. All right. And I'll leave the door cracked open, but I'm like in this wall. I'm going to try to slip in behind it. All right. Uh, so you pull it off, and as soon as you do, it's you feel it uh, start to come to life. Oh, dear. And, uh, as soon as you do, <laughs> as soon as that happens, uh, you just hear this, blah, 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 <laughs> and it jumps off of your hand, <laughs> and it begins running through. And uh, immediately as it does, you just hear... Um, you guys on the other side of the door, you hear this braying, and then you hear screams from the elves and um, panic and uh, chaos. You hear uh, stuff falling over, and uh, you hear uh, the imps and the... That's all signal, boys. Devil. It's time. You're going, oh, what is it? Get it! Kill it! You hear, you hear them cracking the... You hear the cracking of the whip going after it, and uh, you just hear nonstop braying and then moving and all that kind of stuff. All right, so you guys, second part of the plan... Mm-hmm. We're going to try to um, we're going to sneak, uh, sneak in, sneak up, and unlock some of those uh, as many um, elves as we can. Yes. All right. Great. So um, we have at least two minutes. All right. You come up, and um, one of them, one of the elves, uh, is kind of looking over his station. He's looking over. God, what's what is that? What's happening? Did you see it? I didn't see it. I didn't see. It. Hey, who? Who are you? Are you new here? Huh? Wait. Uh, we're here to help you out. From? We're gonna we're gonna Wait. let you out. Uh, we are here to help. The goat's a distraction. Oh, oh we're friends. tools to unlock a uh, lock. Okay, roll lock pick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sleight of hand. <laughs> sleight of hand. As I'm yeah, if you're else, doing yeah. it, if you're doing it, do it for each. And, and I'll one use that you um, mage mitten, which is <laughs> mage mage hand. Okay. Uh, to at simultaneously unlock the one next to me as well. Ah, okay, very good. Roll for that. Okay, uh, I guess uh, seventeen on the first one. Okay, that works. And uh, ooh, uh, 21 on the second. That works as well. Two of them are free. They say, um, no. do you want us to leave? No, lads. Uh, we need you to uh, back us up. Grab some of the weapons that you're making. And when we need to attack, um, have our back. They say, okay. One of them, uh, right near his station, there's a big barrel. And there's a bunch of um, short swords in there. And he grabs it and he goes, here, hand them out. And then he um, like, uh, grabs like a whole very, bunch. Very low, like yeah. uh, arms pointed down. They're all kind of like passing swords down the assembly line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll totally. try to I'll try to uh, unlock another one if I can, and um, I'll let you each go uh, uh, again. Okay. Mm. Fourteen, eighteen, eleven. Yeah, eighteen gets. So now four of them are undone. You can go again with that. Uh, the imp, the imps are gonna try and uh, come over and grab <laughs> the goat. <laughs> grab the goat. Uh, they're flying down. So they DC try and 15. grab it. And uh, they fail. They are unable to. So you guys can roll again for lock picking. And I Ooh. help. 19. 23. 23 gets it. And uh, 19. That gets it. What was yours? 19. Oh, that gets it as well. All right, so seven of them uh, are now undone. All right. Uh, the imps are going to try again. So finally, after some struggle, one of them uh, grabs it and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and just starts uh, tearing it apart and turning it. He just the brings like blah, 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 stops and uh, that. And then the uh, the bearded devil cracks his whip in the air. And he goes, psh, psh, everybody back to work. I'm gonna try to get up closer to it though, while still invisible. For you guys, what are you gonna do now that the goat is done? Oh, we're gonna try and hide, or I'm gonna try and attempt to hide. Okay. So go ahead and roll stealth. Oh, same, very well. Oh, I've got vengeance on this. Thirteen. Uh, fifteen. I'll also hide. Oh, that was a crit. So it works. My cloak makes me look like a pile of boxes great. and crates. <laughs> great, great. You just full, <laughs> full Metal Gear Solid. Just yeah. uh, come over <laughs> like that. <laughs> I just duck. <laughs> Great, you're just you're just actually standing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to act to like thing. one of the old toys on the wall that like they used to make. I'm just <laughs> Great. up against the the back of the wall, kind of eyes eyes wide forward. <laughs> Great. The the imps start um, kind of flying around, making sure everybody's kind of on their mark like that, and none of them, nobody really seems to notice you right now. Have I made it up near the bearded devil at this point? 
Yeah, so you um, roll a stealth check for your sneaking out. How close do you, are you planning to get? Just... Like right up on it. Okay, roll a stealth. 15. All right, you're right up behind it. Cool. The um, elves are kind of looking at each other that have the, they're holding the swords um, down right there, and they're kind of looking down at you guys. Like, uh, what are we, we're holding, we wait for a signal. I turn into a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the signal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>